three and four and. Drew James here from LearnGuitarInLondon.com. I hope you're having a terrific day. Here we have Autumn Leaves, the Eva Cassidy version. If you're ever looking up to becoming a fingerstyle singing guitarist, she is right at the top there. And this song is a really good start for you in that respect. It's by no means a gimme, it's not simple. There are some really nice intricate parts. If you want to get the tab to this, I've made the tab for you. It's available for free at my website. All you need to do is click the link in the video right now or the link in the video description to join the student area of my site. It's completely free, just takes a name and email address and then you can get the tab and play along with me. We're gonna get started on the lesson. Just before we do, if you do like this lesson, please leave a like on my video. And if you do really like my lessons, then don't forget to hit subscribe and then click the bell icon to be notified of when I update with new videos. Let's start learning this terrific song. First of all, I made a boo-boo with my performance at the beginning. If you want it to sound just like Eva Cassidy's live version, you're gonna to need to put a capo on the first fret. As I recorded the intro without the capo, I figured you're gonna be playing along with that one day. I'm gonna leave the capo off for this lesson, but capo fret one, that's what it says on the music. Speaking of the music, it's a really good idea if you get that music, it's available at my website for free. I've left a link in the video description. It just takes a name and email address to join and download it. Uh, I'm gonna be referencing the music quite a lot. We're gonna be doing two bars at a time and then I'm gonna be breaking it down, showing you exactly what we're doing to accomplish what she does. Let's get on with it. First of all, this is fingerstyle guitar. Now I base my fingerstyle approach on a classical approach, which means the thumb plays the thickest and the A and the D, index plays the G, middle plays the B and ring plays the E. Okay, so that's really how I do things. If you don't know the names of the strings, you're also gonna be a bit stuck in this lesson. Eddie A, Dynamite, Goodbye, Eddie. E, A, D, G, B, E. I always name the strings rather than giving them numbers. It just makes more sense to me. So, um, to start off with this song, it does loosely base itself around some chords. There, there are chord references. So if you know the chord D minor seven, you'll be great. If you know a G, you'll be good. If you know a sort of C-ish chord, an A minor. Uh, an F7 as a bar, that's certainly very useful. E7, that will get you off on good stead. Okay, so why don't I take you through the first two bars? Let's do it slowly. So we're starting off with a D minor 7. That means you're going to bar the first fret on the B and the E string, pressing down hard, pointing the finger towards your face. Don't have it straight because it makes it harder to use the other fingers. Middle finger on second fret on the G string. And you're gonna pinch, thumb on the D and ring. Pinch just means pull two strings at the same time. Then index on G to give you the two, then middle, then back to the two. Then I'm gonna, I like to release, well you have to kind of release the bar at that point so that you're just holding down the first fret on the thinnest string, but the middle finger's still there. Pull those two strings that you're now holding and flick the index away. That's why it's got a P above it. Pull off, flick off, same thing. And flick that index finger away to get that sound. Now don't go, it's got rhythm. Three and... Then little finger on fret three, on the B, then index finger on fret one. Okay, third fret on the thickest, next. 
We're going to keep that held down for a lot of this part. Pinch thumb on thickest and middle, and thumb on D, index, thumb on D, pinching that again. First fret on B, pinching on the A string and that B. Then second fret on the A string and third fret on the B string, so that's middle and pinky. Then open on the thinnest. So this bar, take your time. It's got a lovely walk there. It's really good. Leaving that three where it is from the pinky finger, I'll do the next two bars first of all. Okay, so as I was saying, we've just come from this. We're gonna to go to third fret on the B, third fret on the A, and middle finger also on the second fret on the D string. It's like we're doing a C chord, but with the little finger putting this add nine to it, this D note. Thumb on D, index, thumb on D, then pinch it again, then let go. So it's... For that open D string, okay? I'm starting to think that maybe middle and ring might be a better choice of fingers there for you. I suppose it doesn't really matter, okay? <laughs> We've then got this flick off on first fret on the B. Okay, so I'll do bar three for you slowly. I'll do it using my original finger suggestion. So that's two threes, then change it to a G over B, so that's second fret on the A string, pinky on third fret on the thinnest. Flick off on one. Okay. Then to A minor from there, A minor chord, pinching top and bottom string, that's A and B string, thumb on D, lift up the B string, strike it with your middle finger, and hammer the index down to do what's known as a hammer on. Then play the second fret on the D. Third fret on thickest, thumb there and middle finger playing the open. Second fret on the D, open on G, then let go on the D. Then let go and play with your thumb. So that bar, bar four from the A minor, Now I'm going to do bars one to four slowly. Play it along with me. I'll give you a count in. Three and four and. done good moving on for the intermediate players amongst you this will be your biggest test you're then going to an f7 so you make a full bar f bar pressing down all six strings on the first fret middle finger on fret four two of the g and ring finger on fret three on the a that gives you the f7 chord you're going to pinch it with thumb on thickest and index then move the thumb down the chord it's on the a string and the d string middle Okay, so it's, and then pinching top and bottom string, middle, then thumb on D, index D. From here, you can go to an E7. Now, a little cheat, quick way of doing this is this is your F7 to turn it into an E7, lift up the bar and slide that shape down uh, one fret. Now, I don't have muscle memory of doing that, but that's a very quick way of doing it. I like to just use index and middle, but that's one of, none of these things is do as I say rather than as I do. So just move it down. Okay, so then you're just going down the strings, thumb on E, thumb on A, thumb on D, index on G, pinching thumb, middle and ring, 
thumb on D, index and middle. Then to an A minor chord. Okay, I'll get to that in a moment. So what I'll do is I'll take it back to bar four, where we do the A minor, and then we cross over into F7 and E7, and then I'll play seven and eight, just so you can hear what we're gonna do, but I still need to teach those to you. And really, that gives you a lot of the song that you're gonna need. I'll give you a count in three, and four, and... Okay, so that last bar seven and eight. So we've got an A minor, thumb on A, then pinching thumb D and B, then pinching thumb index and ring, then back to the D and the B. That's what that sounds like. You then pinch the D and B again, and you slide it up three frets. So keep the pressure down, slide the chord shape up to get this dun noise. And then you're going to want to just lift up off the ring finger, so open G, that four that you're now holding with the middle finger. Then to this final chord, which is basically the fifth fret on the D and the G, the middle strings of the guitar. That's all you need. And we're going to go thumb on A, index and middle pinch, ring and middle and ring pinch, index, sorry, thumb on D, and then pinching, breaking the finger style rule, thumb, index, and middle. Okay, now that gives you the majority of the chord sequence that you need for this particular song. There is more to it, so I will take you through the rest, especially there's this little midsection where we move to an E sus4. So I will do that, we'll get stuck into bar nine. You've got D minor seven. Just with the same picking pattern twice, thumb and ring, index, middle, index, thumb and ring. To G like before, pinching thumb and B string. Okay, so a little bit of a change. So we've got G, thumb on D, index, thumb on D, A minor, pinching A and B, then open on D, then G over B, so that's second fret on the A string, third fret on the B string, then open on the D. This is bar turn. Then we've got these threes again. Um, so this making this C add nine chord. Okay, so we're pinching it like we did before. And the back half of it is open on D, so you're gonna to need to have to lift up your middle finger and put it back. So that's going open, second. to an F major seven chord. So no F7 this time, you'll be glad to hear. So uh, thumb on D, index, middle, index, do that twice. Okay, F major seven, third fret on the D, second fret on the G, first fret on the B. Back to D minor seven chord, different picking pattern. It's the same picking pattern as the last bar, D, G, B, G, D, G, B, G. E7, first fret on the G, second fret on the A, open on thickest, go down the strings with the thumb, do that again. Then A minor, so this time A, second fret on D, second fret on G, then sliding that chord up again, that one and two that we did before. Then open on D, open on G, four. We've got that four because that's where the index ends up, the middle finger ends up, sorry, when we do the slide. Then to these fives on the middle strings like we had before, but different picking pattern, thumb on A, pinching middle strings for the fives, 
middle and ring for the opens, index, pinching thumb and middle. And then round we go again with a D minor seven. Little cheeky A bass note thrown in there. So that's what makes Eva Cassidy so good is that she sort of knows the theory. She knows what she can do and noodle away with at chords. And it just stops it just being the same picking pattern throughout the whole song. It's very clever. So A string. Okay, but still over just our D minor. You know, we can do that. Uh, into bar 18. So we've actually done this already. Um, 18 is the same as bar 10. C chord. Okay, so 19 is nice. It's the first time we've really approached a C chord. We're going to pinch the A and the B string. Thumb on D, index, middle. Then we're going to lift up our middle finger off the second fret on the D string on the C chord, pinch the D and the middle, then index, then put it back. <coughs> Another great use of the C chord and how she's changing it. Then to your F major seven chord again, with the same picking pattern as before. D minor seven with a pinch halfway through. E7. Easier to read the tab in that, 22, than me speak it out, okay, but it's an E7 chord. A minor. And you should know that technique by now, right? We've done that a lot. Slide. Fives. Now this is what I would call the midsection in the song. So this is bar 25. She goes to an E suspended fourth, which is basically take an A chord and move it up a set of strings. Fret two on the A, D and G string. Picking pattern, thumb on thickest, thumb on D, index, middle, middle and ring, thumb on D, index and middle, index. So a real workout on your picking pattern. E7. So with the E7, you just need this one finger on the first fret to make the G sharp. Pinching thickest in that note. Thumb on D, middle, thumb on D. Then we've got second fret on the thickest and the G string. Pinch those two, then thumb on the D, and then slide that thing up to fret four to have two fours. So that bar. We've done this before. So to recap, when it changes, I think the lyric is since you went away, something like that. So it's D minor seven now. A bass note, G. Done this before. C add nine. Lifting up off the D string, F. And holding that note, okay? So I know I'm sort of accelerating, not holding your hand as much here, but you have done this before. 33, bottom of page two, D minor seven, E seven. Now 35, 36, 37, this is where there's just a little bit more work for you to do in terms of fretting and getting to know the song. Make an A minor, but you don't need the index finger. Thumb on A, thumb on D, index, thumb on D. And third fret on the thickest string. Now, it actually makes more sense. Don't think of it as an A minor, but to use index and middle finger for these twos then ring finger for third fret, because you want to keep these twos held down bar the second fret on the D string. So it's... Then we've got this. Okay, so just practice these chord changes. This is an A sus two, this, and then you've got this. So this is, this is a F sharp minor seven flat and fifth, so it's second fret on the thickest string, second fret on the D 
and the G. So use middle ring and pinky, and then you need index as well on first fret on the B. It's a really jazzy chord that sort of suits the mood, lovely. So a bit of muscle memory practice doing this, and then into that chord that I just showed you. That will really help. So we've got A minor, A minor with the G bass note, this F sharp minor seven flat and fifth, F7, which we had earlier with the bar chord, E7, A minor with the slide, and then these fives. Okay, now that gives you the majority of the song, essentially all of the chord changes that you need in the whole tune. I've, the tab is only pages one to three. Technically it would actually be six pages because a lot of stuff is repeated and there's a piano solo as well. The piano solo is just that same chord progression starting with D minor that we've already learned. So enjoy it. I really hope it's been useful for you. If it has, please leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more finger style videos and click the bell icon to be updated when I release new videos. Keep on playing. Have a great day.